So why should you actually use debugging tools? I mean, why not just do it all in your head? If you actually do try to debug and step through the program in your head, it's actually okay for small, relatively simple programs. As your programs get more complicated, it becomes more difficult to step through the entire program and kind of keep track of what's going on. And another reason is that people are actually bad at detecting memory leaks. A debugger is basically just a tool that helps you analyze and interact with the program, uh, usually while it's running. And most IDEs have a debugger built in, so it's not like you have to go and uh, buy something separate. And GDB is available for free for almost any platform, any major platform anyway. GDB itself was actually created by a guy named Richard Stallman, and he's actually the founder of GNU, which is a organization that uh, makes a lot of tools that are frequently included with Linux. So one thing about GDB is when you run it, you actually run it against compiled code. You don't run it against source code, which might be kind of obvious, but I just thought I should mention it. Now, when you do compile your code, if you think that you might be using GDB at a later time, it's a good idea to add the G switch when you're using either GCC or G++ or whatever you're using to compile it. If you add the G switch, it adds symbols to the compiled code, and that makes it a lot easier for the debugger to give you useful information. Uh, you can run it without it, but you don't get anywhere near as much clarity into what you're seeing. Here's an example of a really simple example of compiling a program, C++. So it's just G++, and then we have the G switch there, and then there's our source code, and then there's our output file. In order to run GDB, it's very simple. It's literally just GDB, and then you give it the path to the executable. So notice that in this case, the program file is in the same path as uh, you know where we're in right now. So I actually do GDB and then the full as if I was executing it myself. So the dot forward slash program. So why don't we take a look at GDB in action. And what I've done is created a few simple programs that I've intentionally broken in a way that will make it easy for us to test drive GDB and see if we can figure out what's wrong with them. So the the first program is called loop bug and what it's supposed to do is print the same word five times and then stop. So this is a very simple program. So let's take a look at what it does here. And I'm not going to show you the source code at first because Let's try to see if we can figure out figure it out using GDB, you know, without sort of taking a peek at it first. So let me go ahead and run it here. And uh oh, looks like we're going way past five here. So let me go ahead and stop it. All right, so. There's something wrong here where instead of just printing five and then stopping, we're going way past that. So let's take a look at uh, what GDB can do. So I'm just going to type GDB dot forward slash and then loop bug. And this is the standard menu, well, the prompt that it gives you. And so down in the bottom right, you have your prompt that's just GDB. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just type R, the letter R for run, and then just see what it does here. So when you do run and you don't set any breakpoints, it'll just run through the whole program as if you were just running it normally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to terminate that. Now I'm still in GDB, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint 